Uh, but right. I suggested instead I'm going to make these opening comments. Um, but first, is there someone who uh, would like to be the note taker, minute taker, or who's willing to do that? I'm, I'm here, Meg. I'm happy to do that for the group. Okay. You sure? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Um, I wanted to do that first because so that we capture comments that are made. Um, I'm going to make a few brief comments, uh, which are perfunctory. Uh, there's this uh, Governor Baker on March 12th, 2020, suspended certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, Chapter 30A, Section 18. Uh, I sent you a link to that in case you're curious, as I was, to see what that meant. Uh, it's basically read, uh, uh, redefining quorums. Uh, previously, a quorum could not include people who were participating remotely. Oh. Um, I would like to move the public comment to the end because uh, I've been instructed uh, that this is, if we, I've, I told Angela that we have only in our whole history had public comment once, but um, public comment is where Zoom bombing is most likely to happen. And so it's best to move that to the end. Um, and I wanted to uh, share with everyone and invite um, Holly and Angela to step in if I miss something here. The way the meeting will work is everybody, uh, if you don't, you don't want people to hear your background, you can go up in the corner with the three little dots. I mean, where it says mute, mute yourself, not the three little dots. Um, and uh, I want to suggest that if people want to speak, let's hope that we're all noticing who's trying to speak, but that we simply move, you know, raise our hand rather than try to have some, uh, it's not a big enough group to need some technological way of doing that. Hi, Liz. Didn't Hi. See you here. Um, did that cover it, Angela? It, Meg, the only other thing we've been doing, I don't know whether we have to for the commission, is the chair has called out each person's name to make sure they can hear and be heard. So Great. it's a, Okay. So I'll do that. And the, the meeting has started just so we're, and we're recording this and it'll be available to the uh, many people in the public who might want to watch it. So John Penske. Here. I can hear you fine. Great. John McCabe. Oh, well, I'm we don't hear you. Yep. You're muted. But you hear us? Yep. Great. Um, Liz Larson. Here and can hear. Great. Holly? I am, I am here and can hear you all. And Kat, I'm going in the order in which you appear on my uh, gallery. Kathy? Here and can hear. John? Page? Here. Here. Ooh. Oh, we can't hear you. You were sounded a little bit cro croaky. Can you hear me? Really. Uh, There's something odd with your audio. It's like a distortion. Let's see. Bummer. Are you using the computer audio, John? Oh, mm. now we don't hear you at all. So. Mm. Any suggestions of what well, we should do? A couple of times, sometimes it's worked if he just rejoins and makes sure he chooses computer audio. Other times, Someone like Athena, who's not on right now, has magically solved the problem, and I'm never, I'm never quite sure what, <laughs> what was done. But we, we've had this more than once, that one person's mic is not working. They can hear us, but we can't hear them. Angela, do you have any suggestions? So some people, the workaround would be to try and rejoin and see if that fixes the problem. But if not, they're able to use the video from the computer, but then they dial into the meeting on their cell phone. And those instructions for dial-in so that you can hear the meeting are on the agenda. Um, I don't think they're on this agenda, Meg. You they're, didn't no, they're in the invitation. I didn't, okay. didn't, I hadn't received that when I, I didn't realize to put that was a good idea. So Kathy, that was a great idea to check everybody's uh, video and audio. Um, so uh, I would like to review the agenda and particularly because it's a pretty packed agenda. Let's wait. Are we for going John. to wait for John? Just what I was just 
I was just halfway through. Yeah, I said, but let's wait for John. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? No. Try and go. Um, are Are you using earbuds, John? Try and go no earbuds. Try and go just. Do you have a microphone on your computer? Are you You have to turn the Bluetooth off on your computer and just use the microphone for your computer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe try Is it any progress, John? Can you get a little closer to your computer? Maybe it's too far. Do you have a fan or something running that could be interrupting? Your voice is sort of is distorted. Maybe try the phone, the cell phone method. But you're also, right now, you're showing up as muted for me. Wow. Okay, so he's hopped off, he's restarting. Yeah. Dang, I wish I could turn the air conditioner on. Yeah, I know. <sighs> Shopping for an ergonomic chair, I just started classes and oh, this boy. is not going to work out if I don't get it. I have a nice chair, but it's not ergonomic. John is I've been sitting here all day. I feel like my neck is broken. I'm just texted. You can get started. I'll restart. Meg, do you know how to share your screen to show us the agenda? Yep. Okay. We'll. Because what what will happen is everyone will still see their faces either along the side or up across the top. Yeah, I um. Cool option. Uh, I didn't. I sent it again this morning, but I'm happy to share it. Sure. Whoops! Yeah. The wrong thing up there. Just a second. Um, stop share. Yeah, I have it right here. Let's see. Um, yeah, why well, am I keep getting Mandy Joe's thing? No, you have, oh, you've got the agenda. There it is. Yours is, yeah, it's there. Okay, good. Um, so John said to start, why don't we start, uh, I hate to do that, but let's, the, I, I identified two goals for the meeting to determine whether to request an amended timeline for the report in light of the change in priorities. And the second was to be, and uh, was the, the goal of our uh, meeting that was canceled in March to hear and discuss each commissioner's thinking and questions about participatory budgeting. Those are topics eight and nine uh, although we're moving public comment down, I think that um, this, do people agree that those are the two priorities of this meeting? To yeah. Liz? Yes. <clears throat> um, I would like to propose that we swap eight and nine. Great. Because I, I think that one could inform the other. Okay, terrific. And um, I'll give you an update on eight, which is about to be nine. Do people agree with that? Um, I've been in touch with the town manager and he's had an opinion from the town council that we can get an extension uh, without any consequence. He pr recommends that we take it to the council, although we're not obligated to do that. Um, and he would like to know what the length of time we would like uh, extended. So that's all good news. And he also, John and I had discussed before this meeting that he and I would write a memo to the council, but Paul said that there's no need for that. He'll just write one, you know, one himself. So that's a, uh, so let's do nine and then eight. Okay. Uh, anything else about the agenda? Looks good. Great. I thought because uh, we've all been through this extraordinary event, we're still in the middle of it. It would be good to take a, just maybe people can pass, but if, check in how everybody's doing with this astonishing global event we're in the middle of. 
everybody healthy. I'll start. We're all fine. I'm dreading the winter when we're going to not have the good weather to be outdoors, but um, basically feeling uh, grateful to live in the rural area like we do. My family's all fine. Anybody else want to? Oh, there's John. Good. Check in how they're doing. Everybody's fine at my house. Um, Great. Just started teaching this, this semester at HCC, just started two days ago. I've got two classes. One of them is a Zoom, a Zoom class with 32 kids from Holyoke High School. That's going to be interesting. They, go, they, get, they get to spend the whole time going like this. <laughs> but uh, it should be fun. And uh, all is good. Else, everybody, Liz, your family okay? Yeah, everybody's fine. I can't see everybody at once. Am I doing something wrong? You have to click way, way up at top of this yeah. very top. There's a view option, and you can make it side by side. If you push the yeah, little one, two, three, I can only get five of us on the screen, but that's okay. I'm going to stop sharing once we've agreed on the agenda because uh, I don't think we need to be looking at it all the time. It's okay. See each other. Yep. Okay. And I can see. Yep. Uh, John, how are you doing, John Page? Good. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Perfect. All right. Good. I've been on Zooms all day. I don't know why it chose to stop now, but um, I'm I'm doing well given the circumstances and yeah. Kathy, how are you doing? How's your Fine. Life? Good. I can't believe how grueling uh, your schedule is. It's breathtaking. Well, some people get energized by it, so it's a pe peculiar pe personality peculiarity. <laughs> Holly, Angela, how are you doing? Everything okay? I'm fine. Just plugging along, taking it day by day. That's good. Um, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Great. So I'm going to stop. Let's see. I'm going to uh, let's. Well, I'm going to stop the sharing so that we can um, uh, see each other more clearly. Has everybody got a good look at the agenda? I can bring it back up whenever we want to. But we're going to first talk about share each of our thinking and questions about this number nine that I'm sort of circling my cursor around, and then we'll do ten which is discussing what people said. We can do that as one. And then we'll go to eight for request and extension and uh, schedule our next steps. Liz is raising her hand. Oh, we need to approve the minutes first. Yeah, I was just gonna do that. I'm, gonna, okay. I'm just about to approve, go to the minutes. I wanted to stop sharing so we can see each other when you're raising our hand because otherwise we have to keep scrolling. Okay, great. If you need the... Uh, agenda again, I can share it again, or I can even, we all have it. So let's approve the minutes and bravo to John for astonishing five pages of minutes for our, from our February 27th meeting. Any comments, any changes? Um, I only wanted to say they were excellent and I had no changes on them at all. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do anything like a proof proof them, but nothing even hit me. When I take minutes, I always have typos, so nothing hit me. <laughs> Thank you. I was impressed you could still find them on your, <laughs> like. <laughs> well, I, luckily, I found them. I do have one comment to make, and I'm not sure that it's even really that important, but in the last paragraph on page two, the second sentence says CPAC proposals can come from any nonprofit organization. I don't think it's necessarily limited to nonprofit organizations. Most of the people who have applied in the past have all been nonprofit organizations or the town itself, but I don't think that that's necessarily, if that's to say those are the only people that can apply, but it should maybe say typically CPA proposals come from nonprofit organizations. Okay, should we make that change without objection? Yeah, and I think it's a good one if we take nonprofit out because it clearly sometimes CPA is coming directly from the town government too. So right. it's a public entity. So just organized from, I guess it says any organization. Any organization yeah. Yeah. John, do you have any 
John, do you have the uh, energy to make that edit? Yes, I think if I just remove nonprofit, does that fix it? Fix yep. the Senate? Fine. Yep. I could do it myself too, but thank you. Since any other comments? That was all I had. Um, I want to point out that we had a plan for two meetings in a row, uh, which were uh, uh, March 12th and March 26th. And we had planned, I'm not saying we should do this, but I just want to point out that we had a quite a helpful discussion, I thought, about planning two meetings ahead. That this one, March 12th, is the one we're having now uh, to sh um, get sh work toward whether we have consensus or not around part how participatory budgeting might work in Amherst. And then our, then in February, our idea was that the following meeting, we would focus on outreach. Uh, and I, um, with the community participation officers, and I want to, I'm starring that in my copy of the notes to say, I think that's, the timing for that is not our next meeting. <laughs> but that's related to whether we help, whether we agree to ex uh, look for an extension and how long it would be. Okay, all in favor of the minutes as amended? Aye. 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 Okay. It, it would be really helpful if we could do a roll call vote. I'm okay. sorry, Meg. Okay, that's okay. Very good. Uh, John Fenske, I'm going to go in the order I see you. John Fenske, I'm saying aye. He's waving his hand. Meg Gage, yes, aye. John McCabe? Yep, aye. Liz Larson? Aye. Holly Bowser? Aye. Kathy Shane? Aye. John Page? Aye. Okay, thank you. Minutes approved as amended. So um, we're going to, uh, we're, uh, had intended to all be prepared to speak uh, in five minutes or less about our thoughts on participatory budgeting. Um, I suggest that we go around and everybody does that and that we only take really true clarifying questions like when you said this, did you mean this or did you mean that? Uh, rather than have a discussion after each one so that um, we discuss them as a whole. Does that make sense as a process? Okay. Who would like to go first? John. I happen to, I happen to find, I just, I happened to find the legal pad that I wrote something down on in March uh, for the meeting that got canceled. Um, <clears throat> and I'm glad I found it because I didn't remember what I was thinking. So what I have here, I'll just read it. It says, realistically, I, this is just my opinion, of course, my humble opinion. Realistically, there is probably little chance of getting a percentage budget set aside for PB given the commitment by the town, which I'm not even sure about at this point with regard to the four capital projects. I don't know how COVID affects that. Um, but could participatory, could PB be a useful process for the town in a period of fiscal stress? And I think it probably really could be. One possibility would be to seek seed money that could be leveraged via a combination of academic partnerships with UMass and Amherst and maybe the other colleges um, and maybe have them help us as well seek grant fund. But I know, Meg, that, that that was one of your things over the years, right? At Proteus, you're, you're very familiar with all that. Um, and to pursue, uh, pursue PB as a way to meet small scale local needs beyond the four major projects and promote community participation. That's what I wrote down. Great. Any clarifying questions? I'm not going to call on people if people want to volunteer. Who anyone would like to go next? That was way less than five minutes. I have a little. I have a little. Uh... I'll go next. Okay, great. Thank you. Liz. Okay, so I'm. I have my notes here. I'm not ignoring you. Um, so before all of this hit, I was kind of leaning in one direction, and I think even more, I'm leaning in the same direction. Um, Kathy had a really great memo um, that she sent around uh, from February 21st that really outlined where we are right now with uh, residents able to participate in budgeting decisions. And after reading that and looking over and thinking, um, I don't think that participatory budgeting is viable for Amherst at this time. Not to say 
that it won't be something to do in the future. Um, the reason I think this, I think Kathy really laid out really well in the memo. Uh, we already have three ways that residents have access to participating in budget decisions. They are not well utilized at the moment. I think um, those could probably be better um, promoted to the community and perhaps we could get more participation. Um, <coughs> I guess one thing that I'm particularly concerned about is currently there's no staff support for the existing um, programs such uh, under the uh, capital projects and, and CPAC and all of those. There's no staff support from the town by adding another uh, something that needs staff support, but we don't have the ability to provide for that. Uh, I think stretches our very limited financial and human resources. Um, I think instead what we should do is focus on incorporating many of the really wonderful ideas and takeaways that we've gotten from our conversations with other communities and we should incorporate these into the existing programs. One thing that definitely would need to be addressed is finding a way to make the final decision, um, uh, the final provision to give the residents um, this final say over the funding. Right now there are both the town council and the town manager have final say or can veto things. And I think we would need to find a way to make sure there is a portion of the funds that the residents have the final say over. So, there. Great. Any clarifying questions? Oh, oh, yes. And also, I think that this is something that would be revisited. I would suggest that it would be revisited uh, in three to five years. Anyone want to volunteer to go next? Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Kathy. Just unmuting. I'm going to build on what Liz said, because to get ready for today, I went back and read what I wrote. And I think I had written something else, but unlike Jonathan and Liz, I can't find it. So I just wrote it again. So um, just one point at the beginning, I thought it was really useful when we did the interviews with towns and read about what they'd done to look at what were, I thought, some key elements that where it was succeeding and operational, um, that most of them with one exception had a sufficient budget that they could set aside some money and just say, this is the money. Um, and they made it clear it was a one-time expense that it wouldn't be operating budget. They had a plan on how to outreach and publicize. They had staff support to flesh out the proposal so that you didn't have a one sentence proposal from someone that couldn't be costed. They set up a process where you could vote whether it was district specific or wider and there was staff support for that. So given the size of Amherst and how much our staff, we have an example here in, in Angela. Angela has, I don't know how many different hats she wears and different titles. Um, we stretch staff already with a lot of um, different functions. I don't think it's viable now to set up a new process, but I do think we can build on what we have. So where Liz was saying, we have three possible funding routes. Um, and the actions I was thinking that could be taken would be keep the proposal period open longer, better outreach to neighborhood groups, perhaps through the district council or, or our community participation to encourage proposals, some kind of a template with staff support or even I started thinking we have some volunteer residents who are really good at this and say, here's your idea, let's flush it out and work on it to turn it into a coherent paragraph. Um, and maybe get at least uh, in theory commitment that some amount of the dollars in the joint capital planning process and or CPA to extent their viable proposals would go toward this. So whether it's something like $50,000, but a, a good faith effort to say these get priority. Um, so I thought building on what we have would be really good. And I do think um, the point Liz made, um, we have to check le le legally. I'm not sure we can actually require a portion without some kind of a bylaw, because even the council has this funny 
oh, I, it's the wrong word, um, JCPC, the Capital Planning Group, where I chair, we make a recommendation to the town manager and he comes back to the council with a budget, with or without our complete recommendation. It is listening, it's interactive. The council can cut, but not reallocate. So, so we have these limits in the charter. So if we actually wanted to say 50,000 each year or up to 50,000 each year, would unless there are no proposals, I'm not sure how we would do that. We might need a bylaw, we might need something. So. So that's where I'm going to stop that I came out with that I think we could, we've got opportunities to make what we have better. And one person on CPAC has opened up a Facebook page and there's been a subcommittee to talk about how can we get outreach because there's money to be spent and they don't always have um, excess proposals, you know, as boy, we can only fend 10 and we only get nine, you know, so we'd like to get them up. So he, I think if we ever wanted to have that person come and talk with us, he could talk about whatever ideas they've had on outreach, you know, how could they solicit, make it clear that this is a townwide, although it has to be in the categories that CPAC can fund. That's the end of mine. I have one clarifying question. I apologize. At the beginning, you said you went back and looked at your notes and then you referred to uh, a group that I, could, I didn't hear. You were reporting on what recommendations was it CPAC made at the beginning of your remarks? Um, no, I just said the memo I wrote at the beginning. Uh -huh. and, then, and then my view of when we went through all the different towns okay. and cities was, and we had a, a meeting, I think, where we talked about what were some of the key elements of success that seemed to be important to these. So this, this list of, you know, the budget, the outreach, the staff support didn't just come from my head. It was also, it was, we talked about that each of them seemed to have that in some way. Um, some started with foundation support clearly, but then they embedded it in the town and the town staffing. Thank you. Any other clarifying questions? Warren, Kathy, did I miss here? <clears throat> I thought in the beginning you said there there were three vehicles. Yeah. And I, right. oh, the third, I didn't. The third, is the, the third one is the community development block grant. Oh, I yeah, can right. read. No, so you know, for CPAC, you know, each has what can it be used for? Resident capital proposal can only be used for capital. So it's one time in investment. CPAC has open space slash conservation, which has recreation in it, community housing historic. CDBG is a targeted more on low and moderate income, but it's the one where you could have operating budget. It can be social services. You know, so it could be a summer program, it could be an after school, you know, so it's got that additional flexibility if people had ideas. Um, okay, next, volunteer to go next. I can go next. Great, thanks, John. Okay. Um, so my notes, uh, what I was going to say back in March, um, First of all, I just like to go to a very abstract level and talk about general criteria for what makes for good participatory budgeting. And I think based on what we've seen and discussed so far, uh, we would all agree, maybe not, but anyway, I, I think it would involve uh, especially increased citizen participation and ideally permanently. Uh, it would reduce or not add to the work of staff, town staff, of the town manager and the town council. Again, this is all ideally. Uh, it would pay for itself or even make money by finding outside funds. And it would help to give everyone the sense that funding is being allocated in ways that are more obviously in line with town priorities, whatever they may be. So those are the, the general criteria I note. And what we've seen so far, uh, and I may be uh, misrepresenting this or being unfair, but I, I get the sense that we're talking in most of the examples we've looked at, uh, we've, we've seen towns putting aside a pot of money that is used as a lure, a kind of a bait to stimulate citizen participation engagement. And um, 
you know, that, that has its problems and, and I might be able to get on board with, with recommending that Amherst do something like that. I'd like to actually focus my remarks on something else, which is what I'd call uh, stretch or reach goals, ambitions for participatory budgeting. And uh, by that, I mean, uh, I think that we ought to consider participatory budgeting in a much broader way. Um, and uh, I, I think it could be an opportunity to enhance citizen participation in ordinary recurring and especially thorny budgetary issues. That is on the issues where town officials need the most help. So for example, um, I think that um, it would help to clarify the level of tolerance among citizens for the current level or even a higher level of the real estate tax burden. Um, another way to talk about that is say the next time an override referendum comes up, is the town going to be ready to debate that? Will people understand what's involved? You know, could participatory budgeting help people to be prepared for this crunch time when we talk about, do we really uh, accept the current real estate burden? And on top of that, are we willing to engage in an override, a referendum? Um, there's a, on a much smaller scale, there's the hot potato issue of uh, town council compensation. Um, I am, from what I can understand, we spend around $70,000 to compensate the town councilors and the uh, president. Um, and uh, personally, I find it a huge bargain. I see them working like crazy all the time. And I think it might make sense to consider an increase in that compensation. And yet, I think of it as a hot potato that is the kind of thing the town council and the town manager are probably not that well equipped to address. And how could participation by citizens help people to understand the pros and cons of a small amount, a token amount, versus something that's more substantial uh, in order to have a, uh, a town council that is adequately compensated. Um, there are other things along these lines. Um, you know, I, I've been to meetings where uh, people have brought up, uh, I've seen firefighters present who've said, look, we haven't been adequately funded for years and years. And more recently, um, it's come to people's attention. There are a lot of folks in town who are uh, interested in looking closely at the police department budget. Um, you know, are we adequate, are, are the citizens of Amherst, do they have enough information readily available and do they have ways to think about this that are uh, structured and helpfully? Um, I, I don't know, I'm just asking all of you to think about participatory budgeting in a more ambitious way that would engage the citizenry in ways that would um, be helpful to the people who have to make these, these thorny decisions. Uh, and finally, just a couple of points. Uh, I think it might be useful if uh, budgeting discussions could standardize and regularize uh, what I might call helpful public budgeting math. I'm thinking of things like price tags for significant items being put in uh, and maybe this is done. I've seen numbers like this on, on the budget sheets, but it might be helpful to highlight um, price tags as a percent of operating or capital budget, or to see price tags that show the impact on the tax rate or the median or typical taxpayer bill. And then uh, finally, there are <clears throat> possibly a specific and useful benchmarking uh, that can be done for how budgeting is done. I'm thinking of best practices elsewhere, uh, and especially uh, since I've seen it come up so many times, how do we count students when we're talking about per capita things? I mean, it's not really obvious to me that you can take one number or the other, the number of, of residents without the students or the num all the residents, including the students. Anyway, that's, I, I spent a lot of time on what I call these stretch reach things, which are maybe you know, beyond what others are interested in, but I, I would like to see participatory budgeting try to tackle or include those items too. Thank you. Great. Uh, clarifying questions? Sure. Okay. Um, I, I, just, I have one, but then I'll build on it later. I think these were incredibly uh, thought stimulating ideas. So if, if part of what you're thinking is that, um, providing enough information that people could participate in a discussion about thorny issues and whoever the decision makers would be could get public feedback having given them enough information. 
you know, so I heard you know, things like, police, you know, like yeah. on the one hand, on the other. Um, so it's, it's, it's trying to get package, you know, like police and fire, you know, what are the issues? What do we have? Right. How does it look? You know, we'd have to get, and then you could have the larger conversation, right? Yeah. Well, there's that. And I mean, um, at a uh, finer grain level, you might, you know, ideally you would hope for something amounting to continuous polling. I mean, we're getting all kinds of polling now about the presidential election. So, you know, I happen to know how, where North Carolina stands and so forth and so on. It would be useful in town, I think, if you and the other counselors and the town manager had a sense of where people stood on thorny budgetary issues uh, in, a, in a rather continuous fashion instead of episodic and driven by people's interest in the topic or or the um, what I call the self-identified particip uh, participants in town discussions um, you know it, it comes to a head when you have a referendum or for that matter a town council election I suppose but I I don't know exactly what this would amount to, but I'm saying that, to my mind, participatory budgeting ideally ought to be about citizens being well-informed and being continuously polled. There we go. Thank you. Okay, any more clarifying questions for John? No, I'll just, I'll just speak in support of John's idea. And you mentioned, and I really wasn't paying close attention, so I might have it all wrong, but when, there, when the defunding of the police uh, issue came up, I heard Scott Livingstone say, sure, you want to have that conversation? Let's have that conversation. And I don't think she did. I, I, it seemed like it didn't happen. One, a group with a very sort of extreme version of police defunding got their thing out there and the council was forced to vote it down. It could have, I, I heard Scott saying, sure, let's talk about what priorities police should be focused on and, and what you know, mental health and other things that might possibly be handled better some other way. And it seemed like we never got a chance to have the conversation. So let's... Uh pin that for our discussion after uh, we go okay. through. So we have uh, Holly, John, and myself. Oh, shall I go next? Or Holly, do you want to go next? Or John? Doesn't matter to me. You're not yeah. obligated to say anything if you are not don't want to. Sh I can go next. OK, great. Um, I've been, I think this conversation is transitioning to what are our next steps. And I've been a little bit conflicted because participatory budgeting might be just one of the things that we need right now when there's unrest, um, people feel like they're disconnected from the democratic process. Um, and also we've seen at least through work with downtown businesses, um, micro grants can be helpful. And even if it's small amounts, those little projects and little things can make a difference. So while that makes me lean into, we should keep working on this in a formal participatory budgeting process, I think politically and financially, it's just not feasible at this time. Um, we're asking, you know, the town manager and then town council to make really tough decisions about who and what to cut. And then they're going to have to find a space for this right now, which doesn't seem realistic. However, I do like the idea, which we've talked about since the beginning of, can we increase the participation in resident capital requests, CPA, CDBG, and really the whole budget process. So we could continue this. I think we need to ask for an extension. Um, how much of an extension, I'm not quite sure. And I think we can resume a conversation about um, a formal participatory budgeting process later, a key element of which will have to be private funds, whether from the schools or fundraising or what. Um, but I think that conversation we're going to have to put on hold for at least a year. Any clarifying questions? So shall I go next, Holly, or do you want to go next? It doesn't matter either way. Well, I'll go next, so I'm not last. You can be the last. Um, I wrote mine out so that I would be sure I didn't go over five minutes, and it's actually under four minutes. And this is what I wrote before, so the dates are all off, but I didn't want to rewrite it because we don't, we haven't had the conversation about timing. <clears throat> my thinking, so I apologize for reading it, but anyway, my thinking is motivated by my commitment to increasing meaningful participation by Amherst residents in the new government. 
Well, I feel, um, and based on my experience on the Charter Commission, well, I feel, I feel that while our new government is more efficient than the old, there are very few mechanisms for meeting. What? Did I? For meaningful participation. For me, what makes participation meaningful is participation that gives residents power to influence policy decisions, opportunities that are open to all. Meaningful participation is about people having actual power. Meaningful participation has to be more than informing, consulting, and placating unhappy re individual residents. Of course, government has to be responsive to people with problems, but having your problems solved, in my opinion, isn't meaningful participation. And recently on the council, I'll just say this in as nice a way as I can, not Kathy at all, but there have been council members who appeared to dismiss public input. Um, and I'll just, I, I, let me just keep going what I wrote. Um, I hope we will be able to reach consensus around a proposal for participatory budgeting for Amherst that determines the allocation of $100,000 of which I propose half would be raised from private sources. I feel 100,000 is an amount that would be meaningful and would motivate people to propose projects and to vote. For this to be credible, I feel we would have to secure five years of private funding to assure the program commitment would be for more than one year. I envision a one-year PB calendar with proposals submitted, developed, winnowed down, and submitted to the public in the six months between June and November with voting in December based on funding allocated in the previous fiscal year. Projects would be implemented beginning in January. This calendar puts the majority of the work outside the November to May period when town staff are busy developing the next FY town budget. I see a successful PB program depending on the participation of nonprofit organizations and town agencies like the Council on Aging, as well as the schools and school organizations, as well as neighborhood and district groups. Robust outreach, as well as the figuring out the logistics of how the program would work, the role of volunteer committees, the, the method of voting, the use of software to facilitate project development, clarifying the ro specific role of town staff is too much for our commission to undertake and doing so would create a rushed and perhaps poorly thought out proposal that risks failure and unpopularity. My experience on the Charter Commission taught me how hard it is and how the out outcome can be flawed when a group is rushed putting together a complicated new program. Therefore, I propose creating a second committee, an implementation committee, tasked with implementing the new PB program, thinking through exactly how it would work with numerous interactions with different community groups and town st school staff and town agencies, how voting would happen, the operating budget and guidelines for the projects. I suggest that we make a proposal to the council to go forward with PB for Amherst, assuming we have secured the five-year $50,000 a year match commitment for a total of $250,000. I propose we spend time creating a thoughtful and detailed charge to the implementation committee that would work through 2021, that's off year and off, to put the program in place. This would give enough time to build interest and for people to start envisioning projects they would like to propose while the implementation committee works out logistics and procedures. The Charter Commission envisioned the community participation officer would be part of the staffing for this project. The town's 2022 budget approved in May 2021 would include funding for the first year of PB, which obviously those years are wrong, which would begin with proposals submitting in May of 2022 and voting in December of 2022. One of the strengths of participatory budgeting is how it encourages people to work together to get what they want, not just as individuals. This is how influencing government works building support from enough different people, compromising and having meaningful means of participation. This is the core of what democracy is. I'm sorry for the traffic. This is the core, I was, oh, that truck. This is the core of what, the truck went by Kathy's house then came down here. Um, any clarifying questions? <laughs> yeah, I, I have a clarifying question. Um, I reread the uh, material written by Mandy Jo Haneke and you, you know you use this expression meaningful participation and i think i was reminded that um kathy did a useful review of these actual bodies that invite or in part participation uh, uh, but didn't uh, in fact the charter uh in institute uh, several forums 
they were public forums, as I recall, and, and the, the purpose, they were new, and the purpose was to stimulate citizen participation. I went to a couple of them on budgeting, and uh, to be truthful, I think each time there were more people up in the front of the room than there were in the audience. Uh, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just adding that these were uh, instances of meaningful participation that the charter attempted to institute that, of course, are well short of something like participatory budgeting. Well, some of us on the charter didn't think those were, that we saw them as a way of sharing information with the public, but didn't see them because they were presentations largely of the status of where things stood rather than decisions yet to be made. But I don't want to get beyond clarifying questions. Any other clarifying questions? Um, I just wanted, I do want to say that I agree with what you just said, John. I mean, it was an attempt and there's even a requirement that at least half the time be questions and answers and comments. And so it was an attempt to get whether it, had, it has not worked, um, but it was an attempt to provide information before a decision was made, well before a decision was made. And it has worked when we've had what you called the thorny issues. You know, so the one budget hearing we had, there was extensive comments on police. You know, so it just an example. Okay, any more clarifying questions before we move to Holly? Get my little Holly. Okay. Well, I didn't really prepare any notes. I had sort of forgotten that this was supposed to take place, but um, so I'm glad that I went last because I've been thinking a lot while you all talked and um, jotting down some things that I wanted to to um, comment on. So. You know, in the beginning, I was I was pretty excited about this. Um, I thought that it would be really exciting to get residents involved, and I was really um, on board for getting like schools involved and school children involved and neighborhoods involved, and you know whether it be you know water fountains or park benches or bike racks in low income neighborhoods and um, you know things for children, playgrounds, whatever. Um, I, I thought it would be a pretty fun and exciting way to get people to participate. Um, I am just really sort of starting to see that and throughout this whole process when we saw some of the you know other um, municipalities that were doing it, they were so organized. They were so on top of it. It was so much participation, um, resources, time, energy, you know, media. Um, I just, with everything that's going on right now, I'm starting to sort of see that I, I, I'm not sure that this is the right time for it. Um, especially right now when things are going to be probably financially unstable in the next year or two. Um, I think that trying to get people on board with this is, it's just going to be a tough sell right now. Um, like uh, many of you mentioned, I think Liz and Kathy, um, you know, staff time, um, resources, um, unless we had somebody who could really be dedicated to this and could really push on this, I'm just not sure that right now this is the right time. Um, I do think we have some good programs that are in place and that are definitely underutilized, um, the CPA, the CDBG, the JCPC, um, and I was thinking about the budget forums as well and, you know, that that is something that is fairly new and certainly um, people are showing up, but I don't think enough people are showing up. Um, we now, with the counselors, have district meetings, which we never had before, where the counselors are going out and having, you know, little town meetings in their districts. And I have not participated in any of those, but I'm curious as to what the participation is in those types of things. So I think, um, and again, in my own opinion, um, I think that what we really sort of need to do is to focus on the things that we have in place right now and try to find out how we can continue um, to enhance those and get them to be utilized in a, in a better way to get more people involved. You know, if we had the money right now, I would be a lot more excited to work on this. Um, but especially with, you know, everything that's going on in the last six months, I'm just really not sure right now how we should proceed um, and, and where, where we should go. Okay, any clarifying questions for Holly? 
Um, this uh, invites a discussion, which we won't have now, of how long of a, well, maybe we don't want any extension. We're just going to fold the towel, but I'll, let's, I'm not going to, I hope that doesn't happen. Throw Meg, you had on the agenda, the next thing would be a talk around the ideas we just heard. That's what I'm saying. That's oh, okay. What we're going to do now is talk about the ideas okay. that we just heard. And I have a suggestion for doing that in a rash, you know, so everybody participates. I'm saying it, it, it begs the question of timing, but I, we're not going to discuss that until afterwards. But obviously, different people's remarks had implications for different lengths of an of a, uh, extension or no extension at all. But I'm hoping we're going to go for the extension and not. Um, but so let's keep that in mind that we're also thinking about our next agenda topic, which is uh, how long an extension are we going to request? So why don't we uh, p take turns commenting on what we heard um, and then uh, see if we can identify two or three areas where we have agreement. Uh, or maybe it's also important where we absolutely don't have agreement. Um, Obviously, it's a hard time now and very uh, difficult to know how to, in, how to uh, interpret in, uh, the fact that we're in the middle of a global crisis that has a direct effect on this project that we're working on. Um, so let's take turns commenting on what we heard and asking each other questions if we want to. And I, this doesn't mean speeches, uh, but working if we can toward places where we agree and perhaps clarifying where we don't agree as a process of group kind of reaching some, hopefully. I guess some. I'll start that by just off by saying it seemed like several people were of a similar mind that we have some processes in place and maybe we should focus on improving those processes versus putting new and totally different processes into place. So I'm gonna just pull that as a topic. Um, processes in place, are they what we're, are they, uh, adequate? Can they be uh, developed and expanded and staffed in a way that would be significant? John Pensky, it's, it's helpful. Uh, yeah, so I was, I was thinking, like right, I was, th drop. I was thinking of um, uh, Holly's remarks, uh, which make me think that one possible model for continuing an extension or a, um, a new version of this uh, commission would be to uh, work on the last thing she said, that is to try to bring together, enhance, um, bring regularity and uh, clarity to existing opportunities and processes on the one hand, <clears throat> but on the other hand, to find some way to put on hold or on a back burner or to study further the things that are costly <coughs> Uh, are perhaps asking too much of the town at this uh, particular moment. Um, this is just an, uh, you know, a half thought out idea about what we might be proposing. So just to clarify again, the one half would be work on what we have now that would be low cost and it would just be about regularizing and going forward with those things and, and making them more effective. And on the other hand, having nevertheless a uh, a, a new or renewed commission be a back burner study group that would be ready for the time when the town is ready a year or two from now. Great. I, I apologize. I had intended to acknowledge Angela, who's not on our commission, but she's here staffing the meeting. Uh, if you want to comment, Angela, you know, please do. But I'm not asking you to right now. I just wanted to acknowledge that you're sitting in our group, uh, and you have, you know, you might have ideas. Are there other comments about anybody want? So I'm suggesting that you kind of raise your finger at your hand if you want to speak. Kathy, hey, um, I agree with what John just said. As I went around, we're one, two, three, four, five, six people, and I think at least one, two, three, four, five one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people, and five people were talking about building on what we have now, but making it more effective um, and trying to think of what would that mean? What specific kinds of things do we think can be done to make um, each of these avenues work better? 
And I don't think we can independently, um, we can come up with them as conceptual, but I think we'd even need an, potentially an extension because I'd like to work with the groups that now staff those. And, you know, I'm a district counselor. So certainly if it was right, if I knew right now is the open period for resident proposals or for CPAC proposals, I would invite someone to a district meeting. We'd, we'd publicize it. We'd explain how you apply, what it looks like. So we kind of try to drum it up, you know, um, and, and John Page talking about um, the really micro grants, they were small that made a difference, trying to encourage people to think small. You know, I mean, not think small, but think big, but yeah, a, a bench might make a big difference or, you know, umbrellas down in a recreation area, you know, whatever it is, you know, on, within the thing. So if we could come up with some specific recommendations that would enlarge this, um, um, that is where I would go both in a report back to the council, but we might need to ask for time to do that well. Um, then my other thought is on the bigger picture that John Fenske raised um, on a, a very different level. Um, we have, and I'll just be very controversial with this in terms of not in this room necessarily, we have four big building projects and we did do listening sessions on them. Not that many people came. Um, if we did a head count. Um, there were cards on after people had heard, they went back, there was a long discussion in each group. And then you were said, what did you think? If you read the cards, there was a clear priority among those four in terms of a top ranking. We are unlikely to ask people to vote on a ranking or a polling but it might be a useful thing to do on a, you know, if you only had so much money, which would you do first, which would you do second? You know, so I think there are those bigger issues. Um, and especially if there was any thought we were gonna go out for an override for any of the biggies, um, get some reading, because um, the timing even on an override could be disastrous. People might love the project, but 36, percent unemployment and hard time paying your current property, you know, rent or something. So I, I like the double idea. You had a, a bigger way of saying, get input on thorny issues that wasn't carve out a piece of money. So I just, you know, I made comments on set, trying to set aside or at least aspire to say at least so much money would be spent if proposals come in for resident requests or from individual CPA, you know, as long. So that's where I heard a lot of people saying that and then this blending of ideas of micro, how do we make it clear it can be really small um, and what it can go for. Um, I'll just make a call myself. Um, I want to draw attention to one area of, different, of not consensus. Maybe there's more than one. Uh, and I may be the only one who feels this way that meaningful participation happens when people believe and, and have a role in decision making. And um, I think that's partly why we don't have high turnout at our, at our forums and because uh, people aren't confident that, if, get, I, so I'll just say that, that I think participating in decision making is what's been important to me. I think I may be the only one who feels that way, but uh, which is what voting does and organ, organizing people together to campaign for things that they want and building public support for it in a visible way uh, seems to me important part of what participatory democracy is all about. And especially with the charter of the new government, it's really uh, questionable if we can ever get people to participate with, if they're making suggestions to another body that has the authority to just ignore them. I'm gonna, you know, we're trying to work toward consensus here. Uh, and I, I just wanna say one thing, Meg, um, because on the police issue that was brought up on the budget, um, there was a response that, um, and we did hear from lots of people, as yet 
there hasn't been a what's the action, but we actually froze two positions in the police department, potentially for spending on something else, a different kind of person. And it's just beginning now a conversation on what do we really want to do? What are the issues? And I think that's actually quite remarkable. And um, if we can, if we can make it happen, you know, with first listening to the groups that we're talking. And for me, it was evidence that hearing from 50 people um, and then hearing from them in at first one meeting, then another meeting, then another meeting, um, there is a response to an issue that clearly started nationally and then came down here that might have us rethink the way we, what we call community safety. Um, mm -hmm. And how you foster that, I don't know. You know, this came from outside in, but how you support it. Mm -hmm. So there's an effort for going out to the groups that are formed to embed, it's been embedded in town goals, policy goals with instructions. So the manager's goals. So it, it, it shows up as something that wasn't even on the horizon um, eight months ago. So it's clear that people raising their voices can make a difference yeah. as difficult it is as it is. <laughs> but we don't know how many people don't want to defund the police. <laughs> but anyway, but uh, Liz? So I, just to build on what Kathy was saying, I think that, that the police funding demonstrates that with the proper outreach to the community to, uh, to um, solicit feedback from the community on what, what, the, what the priorities are, things the town council is influenced and can be influenced and it can make a difference. And it's trying to figure out how we harness the energy out there and to get more people to engage the way that the young people were engaging in the you know, um, police funding questions. Um, that's what we need to do. It will work. It just, to date, we haven't been able to find that kind of energy around, around too many issues other than the police funding so far. Okay, other uh, comments? So I'm hearing of a lot of people, maybe I'm the only one who doesn't feel this way, uh, feel that we should focus on strengthen the programs we have by increasing the ways people can make suggestions. We wouldn't change who decides, but we would try to make the processes more robust for how people propose things. And that the work, the work for that would, would be, uh, I'm not sure who would staff it, but this would be something that we would figure out going forward. Um, I'll just say, I was one of a large number of people who made who wrote letters to the council about the planning board process, the letters that were dismissed as testimonials, even though my letter was not a testimonial at all. It was a letter about why we want diverse opinions on our committees. Uh, so I'm just, I'm a little bit cynical from that experience, but um, who had their hand, Kathy? You know, one thing you just quickly said, um, even though they'd have no voice about it, we don't have to set it up that way. If we say we'd like to make an effort to carve out 50,000 if out of the capital budget, 50 out of CPA, bet a bunch of ideas come in, we could uh, say, and then have people vote on them, you know, ha have people rank them, you know, so I'm not saying that there would be no, you know, if people come up with some ideas and there's only so much money, we could, we could definitely make that part of it. I mean, each of these entities has an official body. You know, so if CPA has a decision-making body that brings their proposals, but they probably, if they had 10 small ideas that added up to 50,000 and didn't want to parse, make their own prioritization. You know, so I think, so that's where I said, I'm not, I don't have details right now, but I think we could think through ways that people think they sent their idea in and other people beyond just a small group knew the idea exists and could weigh in on it. I mean, I think we could envision a way to do that if we, um, you know, right. You know, and even one thing on JCPC, and one last thing on JCPC, only one came in this past year. 
but there was an effort if more had come in to make them all the same day. So we could even broadcast that this is the day those proposals will be talked about and we want people to send us letters to do whatever if they, you know. So I, but this is where I think we could build some of this um, not feeling I send an idea and no one listened to me. Right, that's creative because if we can figure out some kind of mechanism for people to actually weigh in on what they want, uh, that would be, they would have more power than if they just make a proposal and never find out what happened. John, did you have your hand sure. up? Sure. Um, I mean, I'm perfectly okay with the idea that we just build on the three vehicles that we have now. But I don't, I mean, and maybe, Meg, I was trying to understand why I'm thinking about this kind of entrepreneurial thing and also the sort of larger question of participatory uh, budgeting as a, as, a, as a sort of democratic movement out there. I think it may be that you and I ended up talking to the academics who are, who are kind of out there in other parts of the country, but are part of this thing that, that you know, is potentially a sort of area of interest and study and activism. Um, and while I find it, I, I totally get the idea of just of just trying to get more people to come to JCPC. I served for three years on JCPC, and yeah, it was mostly the town town employees who come. Um, but there there was some, and and I, I think I think it's a very practical thing to do. But I wish we could think of some hook that we could throw into a report that would say, and there might be a chance here because I guess because I'm an academic, and because I'm also um, leery of the relationship between this town and its colleges for all the good that they bring to us there's very little communication between the organizations and we get hurt a lot you know i've also served on school committees that looked at enrollment declines go down main street it's not hard to understand why why um uh, i'm blanking now what what's the school not our, our school is Crockett farm what's the one that's down at the end of main street or river elementary school Oh, Fort River? Fort River has lost enormous amounts of students. It's because we've lost all that housing to student rentals. Right. I'm not bringing that up for now, but I'm just saying I'm looking for something bigger than just saying, let's spend 50,000 bucks on putting a park bench. I want to engage the, the colleges more on a regular basis. And so I look at this as another little way. Are there some folks in some academic departments that are, all, that are interested in participatory budgeting? Do they want to get pulled into this somehow? Can we hook them in? Um, it's very hard to hook in the senior administration. I used to be a senior admin guy at CUNY. Nobody wants to get hooked in because they don't want to get drawn in. You're gonna, you have to get the academics involved. Um, but I, right. I would love to see some little mention of how we could use this to somehow make something new and entrepreneurial happen, whether it's grant writing or, 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 yeah, or academic study or whatever it is. I think we could raise the money, but I'm, obviously I'm not gonna do it by myself, so, but. For those reasons, I'm going to support what you just said, John. Okay. I mean, the college has given money to the town in all sorts of ways. When you make engage them, engage them more, I think. We just have to engage make the them. They, they don't want to be engaged, but we need to do it anyway. Yeah. Other comments? Liz? Um, so, but first, I think John wanted, John Page <laughs> wanted to say something. So, John, why don't you go first and then I'll have my comments. Sorry. Okay, uh, perfect. Um, I think what I'm starting to hear is that we wouldn't, and it's how I feel, certainly how I feel, is we wouldn't want to write a report on the current deadline saying none of this is for Amherst. So I think we all agree there. So then the question is, are we extending the deadline? How much of an extension? And is that prolonging a difficult conversation later on where we still say it doesn't really fit? Um, I just don't feel comfortable right now finishing up you know, report for, for a deadline that says, I, this is not for Amherst. Because it sounds like we do actually like components of it and we might be able to pull something together, but not on the current timeline. Do you have a sense of what timeline makes sense? I really don't know. And my, my assumption would be just to move everything a year forward. So we would look at a new process, um, I don't know, I guess after January, but that even seems soon, but we would start looking at a new timeline um, to meet a new goal, a new deadline, which would be a year out. But that almost seems too soon. Liz? 
Um, sorry, I started thinking about what John was just saying. Um, sorry. So I think one thing that I'm hearing is when we don't want to be looking at just how to get more people to come to meetings. What right. we need to do is look at, and this can incorporate some of the things we're learning from the academics, what, why don't people want to come to meetings? What would motivate them to come to meetings? How can we do something other than meetings to get more, more energy? And I think in terms of a timeline, I think, yes, we do need to ask for an extension because it sounds like we're changing what it is that we're, we're thinking we were doing. You know, we were commissioned to look at whether or not a participatory budgeting process would work for Amherst. And then we were to turn it over to another committee that would set it up. But it sounds like we are now looking at whether it would work, if it could work in a modified way and how that modified way would incorporate what we already have. And so therefore, yes, we would need at least six, maybe nine months, maybe even a year. Honestly, I don't want to, I joined this because I told Paul Bauckham and it's like it's done in January <laughs> or, you know, it's done in December. So I don't another really want to kick this out another year if we can avoid that. But well, you just had a big break. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, um, are there other comments about the substance of what we've been talking about? I'm sure people have a lot more to say. Uh, I'm observing that we are moving toward consensus. Kathy, I was just going to try to summarize. Do you want to okay. say something? Go I ahead. just want to say something. Um, um, I don't always, I sometimes express myself somewhat better in writing. I'm clearer because I have to get my thoughts together. But I wasn't um, in John Page saying, no, we thought about it and it's not going to work. I was talking about a fairly um, uh, optimistic report about a different way of thinking about participation. That, you know, the, when I read the, char the Charter Commission, there are things called participatory budget books, but, but they vary. And we can define our own. We can create what, you know, we've got... No one has some of the things we have already. Um, so I, I meant something that would be, we're coming back with this as our participatory way of doing with these details. And I could see a part A is building on what we have, but making it work, you know, where people have more of a voice, there is money spent, and B would be a bigger vision. Um, and what that might be, I don't know what that might be, you know, and then you could say, see, maybe three years down the road, we come back and revisit, can we carve out, can we do something that looks more formally, um, the coalition that calls them PBCs, um, but I think we could define who we are, because we are our own group, we're not the Massachusetts legislature saying, this is what it is, and this is the only, you know, so I think, I wasn't talking about, we did our work and we said we can't do it, I was saying, we did our work and we're coming back with a different take on all of this, um, right. but I don't think it can be written by December. <laughs> so I'm just hearing consensus that um, we, I'll, maybe, maybe I'm wrong here, but I'm test, test for consensus, and that was really helpful what you just said, Kathy. Um, that we're thinking of focusing on existing systems, making them more robust with a bigger vision. And I, I hope carving out some part of it where people could actually weigh in on what they want. The, the suggestion Kathy made the previous time she spoke, um, I would totally get behind that. Um, I'm just, I've become quite cynical about participation where people don't have uh, agency, but I may be the only one. John? Uh, yeah, since we're talking about existing systems and processes, could we revisit maybe with Angela's help or Holly's help um, or anybody who knows the role and the existing role and the potential role for the community participation officers? I mean, presumably, I think we've been just assuming without getting very specific, that they would play some ongoing role in whatever we successfully set up, whatever we call participatory budgeting. And I'd be curious to talk a bit more again about 
what they do now already and what they might do in some future vision. Mm -hmm. One of the, I'm going to ask, invite Angela to respond to that. One of the hard things about the way the charter had to be written is you, you were had to just write sort of the spare legal terms rather than saying, you know, this citizen participation officer will be created. And our thinking is that if, you know, you can't do participatory budgeting without some staff, you know, what you can't, we couldn't add all those words. But I think Paul Bachelman has done an extremely creative thing of dividing the position among three people. Uh, Angela, do you want well, to- Also, excuse me, just one more clarification. So there's participation, we're focusing on participation in the budget. I guess one simple question is what other kinds of participation are there? What do, what do they see right. as part of their mandate beyond budgets? Do you feel like responding to that? What are the various things that you and uh, Brianna and- um, Jennifer. Jennifer, right. uh, So just as a quick snippet, um, I, and I wanna give everyone a heads up that I actually have to staff a five o'clock board of health meeting <laughs> and it's 447. Okay. So, um, just in, in, a, in a really quick snippet, um, I have spent most of the day scheduling Zoom interviews for people that we are appointing to the Disability Access Advisory Committee. And also we just wrapped up interviews this week and next for the Affordable Housing Trust Board of Trustees. Jennifer and Brianna at this moment are at the Fort River Mobile Market with Paul Bachman doing outreach for voter registration and uh, census and also trying to get people activated for the upcoming um, charge for the police oversight and community support group that is going to be focused on diversity equity and inclusion for our community um, i'm happy to come back to a, a future meeting where i can kind of flesh out for you how each of us interact with community members and how we're trying to bring more people into the fold <coughs> that would be great I think we'd all, I'm noticing nodding heads, I think, am I? <laughs> she, she, she didn't even mention that earlier today, she set up the District 1 meeting, the Zoom meeting with okay. panelists. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm glad we asked you now. Uh, so um, I think we have some consensus if we can hope, we can't commit, but hope to build out, I'm going to say this and then see if anybody wants to write this up. Um, could, I'm happy to do it or maybe someone else, build on the existing two or three programs that involve citizen, right? We have to remember to say resident. Uh, resident uh, input uh, with possible creative ways that residents could actually vote on some small portion. And I, I'm hoping that some of the other things that have come up that we haven't discussed, like fundraising, I hate to use the word, but you know, partnerships is the word I always used. Uh, having done a whole ton of that, I never called it, you know, in my career, including raising three million, three and a half million for Amherst Cinema. It's, to me, that's just a no brainer, but I may be, John and I may be the only ones. Uh, anyway, uh, I would like to leave unaddressed unless we want to take this further. Uh, some of the many other things that came up. So we're talking about building on existing programs uh, and coming up and adding, if we can, we're not committed to it, but trying to add some mechanism whereby people would do something like voting or weighing in or having a, being able to make decisions. Uh, and that could be representative method, you know, uh, whatever it doesn't, we'll, we'll just, does that sound like a consensus of where we are right now? I think so. The only other thing, Meg, it's not just the voting on. There's no commitment right now to spend any money on a resident proposal. In other words, it can go to the bottom of the heap. So it would be, you know, so you can't vote on something that isn't even on the list. So, you know, so that's why I said conceptually, we're going to have to write up what, right. what it is we're suggesting. Yeah. Right. So, on, right. Okay, John? Just a, just a piggyback. Um, yeah, I'm, I think I think it's absolutely. I think I think it's really smart to say let's just work on these three, but it's got to have a creative angle on how we improve or, or and and perhaps through academic networking. You know, we'll get off that horse now. Um, otherwise, it's very easy for the for the 
process the way it's working now to just folks say, that sounds great. And then they basically just go back to the way it works, which works fine if you're, if you're you know, from public works or the police department or fire or what, but, but there has to be, I, w I really would like to advocate doing that because it's practical, but making sure that there's some kind of, if you pardon the expression, some kind of sexy hook about citizen participation and how this is a movement that's much bigger than just Amherst and put and, and little tiny projects. Even if it's just theoretical, just to try to get people to think that we could be part of something that's, that's bigger and more interesting. Mm -hmm. Liz? So on the assumption that Angela is going to have to get off in nine minutes to go do her other meeting, um, and I'm sorry to do this, Kathy, but I would like to nominate Kathy to write up a proposal for our next a draft because you said it so well, and then you said that you write even better. And so I was hoping if you could take what you said and write it, and I can't imagine it being better, but, um, but I know you have a lot of things to do, so I apologize for nominating you, but I just think you really had encapsulated and, and captured a lot of what we were saying and also able to bring some of the issues as a town councilor some of the things that we would need to clarify as a committee what it is that we would be proposing. I'd be willing, I, I actually have this thing on my notes, but I would expand this and bring it back with like topic sentences and bullets underneath it, you know, rather than trying to write, you know, maybe two sentences under a few so it explains it and mm -hmm. call it very, very rough draft, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. You know, so I've got, I've just added what I call the part B part of it, which is the bigger think, you know, and what might that be. Um, so we could write it with that conceptually. So, uh, so is our next meeting in two weeks? Well, we're going to talk about that next. We have so Meg, if I can just interrupt for a minute, since we are recording to the cloud, I can finish and shape up these minutes from the recording to the cloud. Is there anyone on this call who owns a Zoom license who I can now make the host of this? Because if I make that person who owns a Zoom license a host, then I can hop off and it won't interrupt your you meeting. just a Zoom account? I, yeah. have a, I have a Zoom host license, but John does Perfect. too, right? Yeah. Perfect. So Ma I'm going to make you the host, Meg, and then I can hop off and it won't interrupt the meeting. And I will firm up the minutes from the cloud recording, which will be Thank sent you. to me. Thank you so much for sure. doing Up in the corner, you're the host, Meg. You just, yeah. Meg is host. A little yes. blue light came on. <laughs> That's cute. Came on. And yeah. I promise to come back at a later date and, and flesh out for you kind of where CPOs are and, and how our roles have changed during the pandemic. Great. Thank you, Angela. Sure. Thank you so much. And um, also, I want to, don't want to let it slip by that Kathy just agreed to help us in a huge way and to thank you. Uh, taking up Liz's request to write. The, Sorry, Kathy. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's it's actually I didn't totally grimace because it's a page and a half now. So I think I could get something in, you know, in this bullety kind of form that I write with topic sentence some bullets underneath it, so that we're not reacting to uh, a speech. Great. <laughs> well, um, I think it's it's the consensus points are are. You know, it's not a big document. There's a whole lot might be helpful also to identify the things we need to flesh out, like how would people participate and so on. Got it. Um, I want to move to, if there's no more to say about this, be sure that we get into um, this question of um, an extension. John and I were going to offer to, oh, it says my internet connection is unstable. Hmm. John and I, John Page and I were going to offer to write a memo to the council, but Paul has said that he'll just do it himself. Uh, and Holly's going to report to him uh, after this meeting what length of extension we want. So um, I hate to ask, I'm going to make a, I'm going to just for the sake of discussion, various lengths of extension have been proposed. I'm going to suggest one year, December 2021. Doesn't mean we have to meet all that time, but it, it means we, even if we took four months off to wait and see what happens with this pandemic, it makes it possible for us to be dealing with this at a different time. Um, and it also, uh, I don't know, I just think that 
this isn't this before some people got on we were all sharing how we're feeling i'm i i'm dreading the winter uh i just can't see this thing ending anytime soon so with that in mind i'm thinking a year comments or other suggestions Kathy? I'd, I'd feel better with six months i don't disagree with why a year and it's in part to put some time pressure on us. It's um, to get a report. And if we had, I mean, there've been a few suggestions to say, and a follow-up could be, you know, so if you, you, a couple of you wanted to do fundraising, meet with the academic community, we could, we could say more to come, but it's not the commission. So I just think time pressure is useful. Um, but that's a personal, I worked with a slave driver of a boss for years and she set, impos she set impossible deadlines and then would give us a week or two reprieve, but we did more than we ever thought we could because we had a deadline that was tight rather than loose. But my thinking is not just how much hard we wanna work, but this question of how long this pandemic's gonna be uh, creating a huge question mark over everything. But let's hear what other people think. We got six months, we got a year. Do I hear nine months? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, I'd be willing to do either, but um, but maybe I, 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 do, I, I do agree with you, Meg, that in this really unstable time, and let's, let's not even get into what might happen at, on November the 4th after the election. Yeah. Uh, you might just have to, but I don't want to meet, I don't want to meet, you know, constantly for a year. Um, no. Uh, but there's a there's a lot that could happen in the next in the next year. Uh, I'll I'll go with six months, or if we said a year, just to to see what else is going on in the world. Um, but have a have a lighter meeting, a significantly lighter meeting schedule. Once a month, say. Okay, Liz. Um, I like the idea of six months. I think actually having things be kind of up in the air will perhaps make us a little more creative because we have to think of ways that it would work in, you know, the before times and the now times. Um, also, what we're doing, we are not having to create the entire program and to set everything up. All we need to do is come up with some, here's some suggestions, some, some directions that could it could go in this is how it could work we're not the ones who actually have to implement it so i think six months which would be then what is that june 1st or may 1st june 1st june 1st well no no it's december 1 we were supposed to be so it would be may one january, january february march april may june well anyway okay we're... anyway no um so yeah i would say six months i think that We've already laid a lot of groundwork. I don't think, I think a year is just gonna okay. drag it out too much. Okay, other comments to the... I'm, so, am I on? Oh yes. So um, I guess a little clarification for myself because I'm still sort of unclear of what our proposal is supposed to involve. I mean, I still like the idea that Liz had thrown out originally of revisiting this in three to five years, where maybe at that point there's less stress on staff and money. And we could come up with some better ideas of actually getting to, I think what we all wanted to get to was some, a pot of money set aside every year for projects. I don't see that as being conceivable now, but I do see that as possibly being conceivable two to three, three to five years from now. Um, so if we are just going to be working over the next six months and trying to put together ways to, you know, get more utilization out of the programs that we already have in place, or are we looking to still sort of figure out how this would work phase two kind of would work a bit. So I think what we agree, if, I don't, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I think my question to you is, are you suggesting that we not get an extension? So the top, the conversation now is on whether to get an extension and how long. Right, um, but that's sort of, like, I don't know how long it's gonna take. Are we just working now on participation in existing right. programs or are we still working on what we'd like to see as a phase two or just saying that 
this is what we want to do now and then this is what we want to do later but somebody else is going to figure that out later well, that's very helpful so i think we reached a big step in this meeting which is consensus on uh, focusing on existing programs and hopefully but we don't know how being able to add some element of uh, resident decision making i think we reached that agreement in the process of these statements in our discussion right. I so that's all we have to work on so i think six months is fine but if we're still working on the bigger picture in a phase no, I, think two, it's just I would be leaning towards the one year liz I just want to clarify, um, when I said three to five years, I meant the phase two, revisit it in three to five years to see if we're ready to move to phase two. So. Right. I mean, it might be, for example, the schools would want to have a program, you know, the high school $50,000, that would go a long way. But that's not what we're doing. We've narrowed our focus in this meeting. Okay. Then I think that six months would be fine. That's, for we, and that's what I thought when I said, I see this consensus. And then we, Kathy added the element of well, let's explore how there might be some way that people could participate in decision making that we all agree now on where we're at, which is a big step. Sure. I don't want to over say it, but I just want to, on the other hand, be sure we all agree that's where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. Kathy? Just one more. Liz triggered in my mind one other thing. I actually would like to see movement on this. So if we can get a report out in six months, that says this is the way we think we can improve some of the things we do, very specific. And I just wrote my part C, Holly, that revisit in three to five years. I mean, that the report wouldn't say, well, been there, done there, you know, to something bigger. But we could be saying, we're not completely dropping that idea, just not now's not the time for it. And then this in between thing that is the more, how do we get more democratic processes? You know, so we could say, we don't have a lot to say about either of those, but we, that was part of the bigger discussion we had. So that's why I, you know, I just would love to see a lot more proposals coming where residents felt they could propose something that they don't even know exists and that we figured out some way of um, energizing that and have it done sooner rather than later. Even if in tough times we had a I think we could get some little ideas that turn into big ideas come forward. Um, so I'm just moving along. I think we're moving towards six months. Yeah, I my, su my suggestion that we pause a while and see what's happening. We wouldn't do that because six months we'd have to just keep working right now. Does everybody agree? Is there agreement about that? Or is there anybody who would like a year? So I would like to just say one thing in regards to that. Um, if we own, if we went with another year, CPA is starting up at six o'clock tonight. Proposals are going to be open for that within the next week. Um, JCPC and the budget process is going to be starting this fall. If we go to next December, we're now missing two more budget cycles with this. So if we were able to get this done by June 1st, then it could start next year versus two years from now. So that might be another good reason why we Thank you. want to go for that year. Thank you, Holly. So do we have agreement? I mean, we could vote, but I don't think we need to on six months. And we're not going to take a hiatus. We're going to keep going uh, and have a report ready by June 1st. And I, I like speci specifying June 1st in case there's ambiguity on how we count December. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want it due on May 1st. <laughs> so. No, no, right. But I mean, we've, <laughs> we've just had six months of no meetings. So, or right. more, more than that, since February 27th, we haven't met. So it's not really extending it. It's just taking back the time that we just lost. And we, I chose to not be a squeaky wheel uh, with the town manager about when were we going to get to meet because we were clearly not a priority, which I agreed with. We're not, you know, they needed to get the council and the planning board, all these other things up. So I've just pulled back as did the ranked choice voting commission, which is also asking for an extension. I don't, Holly, do you know how long they're asking for? I am not sure on that now. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant to us, but um, we're not adding the time. We're just moving taking the time we would have worked these last seven months and putting it forward. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna suggest that John, our vice chair and I, uh, redraft for our next meeting a new timeline. Take our old timeline and redraft it. 
Is that a, or does someone else like to do that? John, is that okay with you? Yeah, we could do that. I'm just, we're gonna have to think now what participation looks like. I think we had forums on there and things right. of that nature, so. No, there still could be forums if they have such, if we could. There'll be Zooms. There'll be Zooms. Well, if, I know. Before the two of you jump in and start doing that, should we wait until our next meeting to see what Kathy comes up with? And then you can have a better idea of of what type of things needed to be included in the timeline. I also think based on what Angela said at the very beginning of this, we probably do need to do a roll call that the committee has is voting to ask for a six month extension. Yeah, we'll do that in a second. I just want to be sure we agree. I'll, but um, So let's do one thing at a time. We're, thank you, Liz, that was helpful. We're gonna have a roll call vote on ex asking the council, although according to the our legal counsel, we don't have to ask the council, but we're gonna do it anyway, uh, for a six month extension to June 1st. Uh, I'm gonna do a roll call, John McCabe, John McCabe, John M, John F, do you agree? John Fenske? Agree. Uh, Liz? Agree. Agree, Holly? Agreed. Kathy? Agree. John? John? Agreed. And, and I agree, okay. Actually, we do we have somebody taking notes after Angela left? Angela said she would listen to the recording and take notes, so. And, and in your six months, you'll say, i.e. June 1st. <laughs> June 1st. Yeah. My um, suggestion of John, uh, I think Kathy's not gonna come up with anything that she didn't say. Are you, Kathy? Is, you're summarizing where what we've agreed and what you s no I'm, I'm i was going to write the shell what liz suggested is write a shell of a report that were some topical sentences with some ideas underneath it um right. and i'm just looking at today's the 10th i think when you had sent things out you had the next meeting as the 24th um it would be a little bit better for me and and do, holly do you know whether cpac is meeting every other week I believe we are right now. Because the... It would be better for me not to have it on the 24th also, but I can... Right, so I was just going to say it would be better to not meet again until the 1st at 3.30 for me, if we can keep the 3.30, because that gives me more time. Um, and, okay. and it... On yes. Thursday? Thursday, is October 1st to Thursday? Yeah, I'm just looking on my calendar. It is, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I am in 20, I'm in 2020. Also, that isn't always true when I just flash forward. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Do we, so, to, do we want to pencil off every other? Just so we get them blocked every other Thursday at 3:30. Okay, and then that that will work for me. You know, for me, yes, that works. And then I like Liz's suggestion that after during the next meeting we have we build in the time to say then what are the next things because we talked about if we have a draft of something we don't need to go out to the public right away maybe but but we kind of think about you know what what are we going to do um so after are you saying gonna... that john and i should not redraft the timeline for our next meeting it seemed to me those would be sort of two parallel things that would go hand in hand well the, for the first definitely we would say what's on the agenda for the first then it's is the 15th a continuation of that discussion? Is it something else? I guess, you know, coming up with what the ideas are that we have to slot in somewhere. Um, yeah. So yes to a timeline vote. What do you all think? Could timeline be helpful at our October 1st meeting or not? I'm just trying to... Sure, provisionally, why not? Yeah. That's... Well, it's a draft, so we certainly you can bring it and we can discuss it and make changes to it. That's why you do a draft, because, you yeah. know, seven people... Well, I don't mind. I, I'm not arguing against a timeline. I'm just remembering the old timeline, which had us going out to the public with our first draft report and stuff and saying, be creative when you come up with the next timeline, because we're buying six months here. Right. Um, so the point of us bringing a draft is so there's something to look at and respond to and yeah. change. Not, so we're not looking at a blank slate, because our time now is tight. It's six months. Well, it's a little more than six months, but um, we're not gonna have a hiatus like I was imagining. We're gonna just keep going. And we're just gonna, 
hope that things turn out in November so that we're not all suicidal. But anyway. <laughs> it's nine months. We can produce a life in nine months. We can turn it. <laughs> we should do a report. Good one, Liz. That's awesome. <laughs> Okay. Well, some of us can produce a life in nine <laughs> <laughs> Those days are over. Right. Um, I would like to invite public comment. I'm just looking to see if you have any. I don't think we do, but I'm always. Have no, you have no attendees on Zoom. Nope. Okay, well, we've only had public comment we'll be quick. once. And that was because I spoke at the Amherst College Citizen Participation, you know, Community Engagement class, whatever it was and some students showed up. It was pretty funny. <laughs> okay, topics the chair did not reasonably identify. Uh, I don't have any. Does anybody have any topics that we didn't identify? Um, so we've scheduled our next steps. Um, does anybody have any comments they'd like to make or observations or, it's great we're not jammed against the end of our meeting time. So I just have one comment on how much I appreciate everybody's thoughtfulness, you know, as we went around the room. So if you wrote up anything you said and you had it on yellow paper and you can even just scan it and send it to me, if um, send it in, you know, because I, I did, I do want to wave in, including what you read, Meg, I want to weave in things, even if they're just topic sentences. So Sure, it feels like um, it built off of a group set of um, comments. It's and Great. that's so that's just a request. It it makes it easier for me because sometimes there's the perfect thing that I can copy and paste and just you know figure out where it goes. Also, okay, what's your what's your email? I've, I've lost all that stuff. Um, the easy one. Well. The, the, she, the last name is S C H O E N, mm -hmm. and the letter C for Kathy at Amherst Mass at AmherstMA.gov. That's so the text. It's show and see. Show and see, except Amherst, Mass. except my family always pronounced it Shane, but um, I have one nephew who changed the pronunciation to Shane because he's tired of being asked how to pronounce it. I mean, oh. change his spelling. <laughs> Or, well, don't worry about it. But anyway, that is that is it. Um, Beautiful in German. Yeah, and I think since we've all spoken our comments, you could actually do a reply all to Meg's emails to us because it's no longer, you know, it's already in the pub. Every, everything we said is in the public domain. So if anyone loses anyone, the easiest thing is just to attach it to a reply all, you know, so it's, I'm not just the keeper of it. But if you change the subject, I strongly encourage you to change the subject. If you're sending another email to the list, you're replying all, but it's about a totally different subject, I strongly encourage changing the subject. Just change it to follow up or whatever. So, yeah. Or in any case, what, it's, what, it's just my request. It makes, it makes me feel like I took notes, but that I didn't take um, such abbreviated notes that I didn't capture it, and I don't want to watch the tape. Yeah. <laughs> Agony. Well, I want to add uh, thanks to everybody for the thoughtful comments. I thought everybody's comments were really useful and we were listening to each other. Um, I just have one final comment. This is the first Zoom meeting I have been on where everyone is adequately lit. So thank you. Oh, good. Oh, Some great. of us have learned the trick about putting your laptop a little higher. <laughs> Liz has. Now stick it up on a box so you don't look like Boris Karloff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, right. Well, I've got multiple screens that I'm looking at here, so. Yeah. Any other uh, comments or uh, observations or anything? Okay, so our next meeting is October 1st at 3.30. I'll work with either An Angela seems to be happy to do this, Holly, setting up the meetings. I am happy to have her do it. She is much, much quicker and better at it than me. Well, so anyway, feel so free to work with Angela. You're not staffing this meeting. You're just a full participant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done very few of them. I'm not versed in it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the Amherst system is different when it's, there's two tiers from what I've set up many, many Zoom meetings 
uh, from people all around the country and it's really different. Amherst has all these uh, tiers, which is necessary. Well, thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye. Great. Bye. Uh, See you on you. October 1st. Do we, do we actually Bye. have a oh. meeting officially? Can I make a motion that we adjourn? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I second. second. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Any second? second. Any, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We don't have a roll call for this, do we? No, no, we haven't been. We've all been just so many out. Yeah, that's, that's your answer. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. <laughs> yep. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks for calling in so we could hear you. <laughs> Bye.